Uh, you'll want to take your time and read the questions carefully to prevent any errors uh, on your student account, because what you put on your application is the information that goes on to your student account. If you have any questions about anything specific on the application, then please feel free to contact us in the admissions office. We'll be happy to help you with those specific questions. Now, once you submit your application, you're going to receive an email confirmation that contains your CVCC student ID number, a welcome message to the college, and some very important instructions about your next steps as a brand new student. Now, this email is going to serve as your acceptance letter. So we currently don't mail out acceptance letters, so you want to hang on to that email. And at this point, you know that you're accepted to CVCC and you are considered a student with us. And once you're uh, accepted, you can go ahead and get your high school transcripts to us, as well as any other college transcripts to us as well, if you want to bring in any kind of transfer credit. Now, there are a couple of scenarios in which you do not need to submit the um, application for admission. First, if you are a current dual enrolled student who is currently taking classes with us, or you just took classes, you would already be in our system as an active student, so there's no need to reapply once you finish your dual enroll classes. You'll just need to speak to a counselor who will do what is, in effect, a major change for you. The second scenario is if you have taken classes with us within the past three years, and maybe some of you took some classes already, but you needed to take a break for one reason or another, and now you're ready to resume. Uh, you would not need to resubmit the admissions application if you have attended within three years. You would still be in our system as an active student. Now, once you're accepted, you're going to want to set up your student accounts, and you can do this by clicking the My CVCC button in the upper right hand corner of the home page, and you'll be able to set up your username and password to access your student account. This way you can check your account for any registration holds. You may need to get resolved before enrolling in classes. We'll have you do a placement survey as well um, right after you apply. You'll need to log into your account to do that. And also to check to see if you're classified um, as an in-state student or as an out-of-state student. One major benefit of attending CVCC is that we can offer in-state tuition rates to domiciled Virginia residents, which is lower than the out-of-state rate. And the admissions application has a section on it called Your Background. And here is where you establish your eligibility to receive the in-state rate. So make sure you pay close attention to those questions. Just listing a Virginia address does not automatically qualify you for the in-state rate. The application is automated, and so it's going to respond to the answers that you give on that page. Now, if you're classified out of state and you think you should be in state, then you're more than welcome to appeal that. You'll just need to contact us in the admissions and records office, and we can walk you through that appeal process. Well, I think that's about all I wanted to cover tonight for the admissions process. Again, feel free to contact us in the admissions office with any specific questions you may have, and we'll be happy to help. I'll post our contact info in the chat so you can have that. Well, this time I'm going to go ahead and turn it over uh, to Hunter in our financial aid office. And Hunter, before you do that, can I just do a quick poll real quick? Um, and this is, we'll, we'll do that and then I'll hand it right to you, Hunter, if you wouldn't mind. Right. Um, for the quick poll, I'm going to launch one for you just to kind of see what the reason is for attending today. Is it to apply for what you just heard um, Michael Duncan talking about or for financial aid, learning about the programs, enrolling? paying for classes or other. Um, and I'm gonna give you a little bit to answer that those questions and then we'll look at that at the end for you. I'll share it with everyone. All right, I'm going to end the polling and I'm going to share the results. So it does look like you want to learn about some of the programs that the college offers, um, which is great because um, Francie's going to talk about some and I'm going to talk about some for you and then enrolling and paying for classes, a little bit of everything. Um, there was some that said other. If you would want to unmute yourself and just say why, um, what some of the others are, maybe we can get them addressed for you tonight. Or you can put it in the chat and then we'll try to make sure we cover them for you. 
early college program for high school. Okay, early college. We can definitely do that. Any others? Dual enrollment. Dual enrollment, okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, now I'm going to hand it over to Hunter Overstreet, who's going to talk to you about financial aid. We will get those um, questions for you when I talk about the different programs and stuff for you as well. And uh, before I start, Kim, do you want me to send it back to you for another poll or do I? Please, that would be great. All right. So uh, as Kimberly said, my name is Hunter Overstreet and I work in the uh, financial aid department. And uh, I'm going to actually share my screen. <clears throat> Give me just a second, bear with me. All right. Sorry, let me just get on to. All right, can everybody see that okay? Just nod your head. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, we're going to be talking about financial aid. And uh, first, just wanted to say congratulations to uh, you all, you know, de depending on where you are in your academic career. Some of you may be um, in, still in high school. Some of you may be completing high school. Uh, some of you may be coming back. So whatever your kind of place in, uh, in your academic career is, we're glad to have you. So uh, how to pay for college. Um, Michael Duncan already talked about the uh, application for admission. So hopefully you've already done that or you will do that soon. Uh, now, as far as the financial aid side of it, you're going to go to fafsa.gov, which is listed on the screen. Make sure to go to uh, .gov. Uh, you can end up at fafsa.com or some other sites. Um, but you want to go to this site as it's going to be the free application. So if you see a application that says to put in uh, any kind of payment information, don't do that. You're going to go through uh, through this website. And uh, Michael Duncan also talked about the in-state and out-of-state tuition. Um, and this just kind of lays it out for you. There's the uh, in-state tuition, <clears throat> out-of-state tuition, and that's uh, determined on credit, <clears throat> excuse me, the credit hour. So um, of course, if you're taking a three credit course, four credit course, you would multiply that by um, the total there. So as you can see, the in-state uh, is a good bit cheaper than the out-of-state. So uh, if you are in-state, we want to make sure you get that in-state rate. So uh, as I mentioned, you're going to go to that fafsa.gov to complete the, uh, the financial aid application before you're going to create a FSA ID, uh, and the website is up there as well. If you're under 24, um, you're going to be considered dependent. Uh, there are a couple different circumstances where you would be independent if you're married uh, or if you have a child. Uh, if you have any questions about any of that kind of stuff, uh, you know, feel free to contact us. Uh, I'm going to put the financial aid email and my information on the chat uh, when I'm through with the presentation. Uh, also, if you want a copy of the presentation, um, feel free to let us know. We can, we can send that to you. When you fill out your FAFSA, they're going to ask you for your school code. Um, that's listed here on the, uh, on the document. Um, now, just because you finish your FAFSA and it's, you know, sent in, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is completed. Um, there is something called verification where we may need documents um, from you in order to complete that. So, Make sure to keep an eye on your email, uh, keep an eye on your student center. Um, you'll get messages there about any uh, what's called uh, to-do list items. Uh, so just look out for that. Now, some of the different types of uh, awards that are given, uh, we have the grants, which are uh, which is aid that's not, you don't have to pay back. Uh, obviously the Pell Grant is the big one, FSEOG. We also have state grants, uh, PTAP and the Commonwealth Grant. And then we also have our CVCC Foundation Scholarship. Um, so that's money that's raised 
uh, that's given to students. Now that one, you do have to do a separate application in order to receive um, that money. And you do also have to do the FAFSA as well. So um, even if you feel like, you know, your parents make too much money or you're not gonna be able to, uh, to get uh, aid or Pell Grant, uh, go ahead and fill out the FAFSA. If you do the scholarship, um, they're gonna want you to go ahead and fill the, the FAFSA out beforehand. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, if for any reason uh, you're not able to, um, your aid isn't able to cover everything, uh, we do have a tuition payment plan. Uh, there are a couple steps listed here on the, uh, on the screen on how to do that, how to apply for the payment plan. And you can always contact our business office um, if you have questions about that, um, and they'll, they'll walk you through those, those steps. So a uh, question we get a lot is, can I use financial aid to purchase books and uh, even a laptop? And yes, you can definitely do that. Um, there are certain times uh, before each semester starts uh, when you're able to do that. Um, and that's about it for that. Um, so as far as uh, the pandemic and really any, any big changes, uh, we're here to work with you. So when you submit your FAFSA, you're gonna be submitting tax information uh, from the 2019 year. Um, that's if you do a 2021-2022 FAFSA. So that would be this fall and beyond. Uh, obviously a lot of things have changed since 2019, uh, the pandemic obviously being the, the major one, um, but like I mentioned, any kind of changes. So if you've had, uh, your parents have had reduced hours, if they've been laid off, uh, if you've been laid off, you know, any kind of um, uh, real illness uh, with COVID or anything else, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we will definitely work with you um, to get you the aid you need, uh, despite you know, having to get those taxes from, from 2019 when things may have been different. So just keep that in mind as well. So here's the uh, contact information. I'm going to put the email in the uh, chat as well, and I'm going to put my uh, personal information as well, email and phone. So uh, if you have any questions, I know a lot of times with these type of presentations, I don't have any questions. And then as soon as the the thing is over. I think of two or three things that I should ask. So uh, if, if you're like me, um, just shoot us an email or call us and the hours uh, are listed there as well. All right. And I'm going to send it back over to, uh, to Kimberly. Let me stop sharing the screen. There we go. All right. Thank you so much, Hunter. I will let you know too that um, if you're planning on coming in the summer and taking any classes, and using financial aid, you will need to do the 2021 financial aid application. Um, the 21-22 is for fall of 21 all the way through summer of 22. So just making sure you complete the right application is important too, um, depending on what semester you're starting with. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Oh, you're welcome. I'm gonna do a quick poll, um, another one for you. So I'm gonna Go to technology and I'm gonna launch this for you. Um, do you have a computer or laptop needed for classes? And do you have reliable internet service? I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share the result. So you can see the majority of you have a laptop or a computer and some do not and um, the majority has reliable internet service. And the reason I, I put this out here is just to kind of let you know that we do have a loaner laptop program and we have hotspots available. So for those of you who may not um, have access to that, then we do have loaner laptops and hotspots available. I will share with you when we get into a little bit further how to go in and access that um, for you and apply for those. So um, now I'm going to hand it over to our guest speaker tonight, and that is Francie Dye, and she is our workforce training coordinator. And I'm now to you, Francie. 
Well, thank you so much. I am thrilled to be here with you guys tonight, and I hope you're excited to learn more about CVCC. And quite honestly, every time that I attend one of these sessions or an open house or attend a meeting on campus, I learn more about the things that are going on at CVC. So there is a lot. And so uh, we certainly can learn from you guys and learn from one another about all the wonderful opportunities that are available. Uh, let me share my screen. I have a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation that I'd like to share with you all. And hopefully you guys can share. If you'll just give me a thumbs up and let me know we're good to go, great. Okay, so um, just a little bit about workforce. So we are there on campus. Uh, we are part of the community college um, culture and uh, the, we offer a lot of different opportunities as far as training and education. And a lot of what we offer really blends very nicely with what uh, you may have heard about already and you'll continue to hear about this evening. Um, but we work in partnership with other departments across uh, the campus, but there are some unique items about workforce that I'd like to share with you this evening. So just real quickly, I'm Francie Dye, I'm the Workforce Training Coordinator, and I oversee currently the business and healthcare programs. You'll see my team there, uh, photo, their photos and contact information for my particular team, but we also have a team that oversees um, manufacturing and trades programs and they are accessible as well. And they, are, they include Deborah Short and Angela Sublett. So all of the programs and workforce are basically very uh, unique to our community. Uh, we work with businesses and community partners to develop programs based on community demand. Um, we help to fill employment gaps um, and we build programs based on um, the skills that are required from uh, area businesses. Um, and so you're going to see just a, just a few photos there of some of our students who actually are working out in the community. And uh, all of our programs, we try to make very cost effective and affordable. And we try to make sure that they are basically solving issues for local companies because we want our students, once they complete our programs, to actually have really great job opportunities. Um, out in the community. So for the past few years, we have focused very heavily on nationally recognized credentials. So we have just a multitude of what we call fast forward programs. Most all of these are hybrid programs now, especially with the pandemic. So you're going to have some virtual online learning and you're gonna have some in-person labs. Um, so as you can imagine, with many of our programs, there's a lot of hands-on activities and learning that you've got to be familiar with. Many of our programs are going to require that you actually go out and do some clinical hours at a location or site um, or actually do some projects on campus that are very hands-on. So take a look at the list um, there that I've provided to you. And um, so we can provide specific information about any of these programs if you have an interest uh, in them. And you can see we've got a wide range of both manufacturing and trades as well as business and healthcare. I will tell you for myself, um, with, if, with, if there are folks who are kind of entry level, you've got an interest in healthcare, we have a number of pathways that you may start off in workforce and you earn a credential. You may become employed with one of our business partners, but you may just decide, hey, I can really do this. And I've got, um, you know, I've got the desire, I've got the drive and I wanna continue on. So what we have found with a lot of our healthcare students is they have continued on 
to continue to learn. Um, you can actually earn credit by exam. Uh, by on the credit on uh, the workforce department side, and you can continue on uh, with CVCC and, and get your associate's degree. And I've actually have students that are continuing on at Liberty, at University of Lynchburg, and other universities, uh, Centra, Nursing. I mean, they just have just loved the program. They've excelled. Uh, the business partners are encouraging them, and in, in some cases, they're actually advocating for them, helping them fund funding wise. And so there are opportunities for you to continue your pathway um, here. And actually all of these programs are intensive, they're short, um, and they are going to lead to a high demand occupation and career at a livable wage. Um, so when I talk about healthcare, I will tell you that we've got a multitude of programs that you just saw on the previous list and slide, uh, but we're doing something unique this summer for anyone who is interested and just kind of just maybe testing out the waters to say, okay, I think I may be interested, uh, but I want to just kind of see, uh, you know, how this whole experience is with the community college. Here's a free way that you can actually earn a nationally recognized credential. Uh, we are doing this in partnership with one of our community partners, Adult Education of Central Virginia. You can earn the Skills USA Career Essentials credential at no cost. Uh, I can send you information uh, this evening or any time over the next few days if you'd like to learn how you can register and how easy it is to go through this course, kind of get familiar with the technology that we use. We use Canvas platform. And once you use it a few times and, and uh, become familiar with it, our, our staff and our instructors are there to support you and assist you. Uh, you really can dig into this curriculum. And even if you never go any further at the community college, this is a credential that you can put on your resume that companies do recognize and it just just it helps you to hone in your skills and abilities and credentials so take advantage of that uh, this particular program will also offer for those individuals who take that program let's say if you're like hey i think i really want to do a healthcare program if you want to do a medical terminology boot camp we will let you register at no cost again get familiar uh, refresh your terminology, or maybe even just get exposed for the first time to medical term, which is going to help you with many of the healthcare programs that we offer. Um, some of the programs that we are going to be offering um, throughout the year and into the new year is going to include phlebotomy technician. We're offering that several times a year. Medical scribe, we do that in partnership with Centra and Ortho Virginia. Phlebotomy, I should have mentioned Centra, but I've got multiple companies that are wanting to partner with us. And then Medical Assistant, we have a great partnership with Centra and uh, Johnson Health Center. So what I've loved about my programs is since I'm working with companies, when we end some of the programs, lots of the students have either guaranteed interviews or job offers. Um, so as much as you want to put into these programs, I really feel like you're going to get that much out of it and more. So um, we did talk a little bit earlier about financial aid, and I'm not going to go through the specific details about all of the funding for financial aid in workforce, but it is a little bit different. Um, you don't necessarily complete the FAFSA application, but there are a number of links and funding uh, processes that you can go through and lots of, lots of different categories that you may fit in that may pay anywhere from 66 to 100% of your cost. Um, in, in some instances, it may even be beyond that where you're actually getting funds uh, in addition, like you're on the positive side of things, you're getting checks or money in return, which is even better. Um, but it's so easy to qualify if you are a Virginia resident and you have been for a year or more, or sometimes you have a financial need. If you reside in tobacco dependent localities, which for our region is Appomattox, Bedford, Campbell, um, you, may, you may qualify for funding. 
Uh, all of these funding sources are stackable. Uh, we do have a scholar program uh, that if you obtain, if you meet the criteria and you actually obtain your credential, I have students who are earning, they, once they complete, they're, they're receiving a thousand dollar check just for earning their credential in one of our programs. So just take a look there. Um, you know, I can just tell you that many of our students have qualified for some or at least one or multiple funding sources. You'll see here um, a, a couple of other funding sources that we have here. And for the folks who have been impacted by COVID, that's another one. We have the emergency fund with the foundation. And also for anyone who's interested in EMS, which is EMT, advanced EMT and paramedic, we have so many opportunities with that particular pathway um, and, and you can actually earn credit as you go. Um, and uh, you actually are working very closely with area agencies in this area. Um, and they also have a state scholarship program that will actually, re I won't use the word refund, but they will um, issue funding that really will help absorb any out-of-pocket expenses, expenses that you may have incurred through this. So I'll just say the funding is phenomenal um, and I want you to take advantage of, of that. Um, I will put in the chat my contact information. I'll put contact information for our um, office so you can reach out. Um, I'm happy to send this presentation to anyone who asks for it. Uh, because that way you can look at the programs, you can look at um, all of the funding um, caveats and see if you qualify for anything. If you have a specific program that you're interested in, if you'll send me a chat or send me an email, then I'll send you the flyer that directly correlates with that program. Um, and then lastly, I will mention that, and it has already been mentioned, but since we're offering the hybrid programs, uh, we certainly, our students take advantage of the loaner laptops and loaner hotspots, uh, which are very helpful if you have any needs in that area. Um, so again, best of uh, luck with you guys as you're exploring all of your options. The workforce office staff are here to help you in any way that we can. Uh, we're excited for you. This is a new uh, adventure, a new journey and we hope to support you to make it a great successful one. So thanks so much. Okay, now I'm gonna um, do one more quick poll for you. And um, on this one, it's gonna ask you about the programs that you're interested in. And that's how I'm gonna be able to benefit you and talk to you a little bit more about some of these programs. So if you'll take a minute and just answer what programs you're interested in. All right, I'm going to share the results and it's a good mixture. Um, well, good thing we had Allied Health. We had some of the health um, options for you this this time with um, Francie for workforce, some of the ones that they had, um, but I can cover some of the others as well. Um, some of the technical programs as well as some of the transfers. So that's awesome. I will cover those for you shortly. Um, I do want to just let you know that um, from the very beginning, you know, from the application point where Michael Duncan was talking to you about, we will be reaching out to you to work with you and help onboard you through the process, helping you through the process of going through and making sure that that application for financial aid gets submitted. Even if you think you don't qualify for anything, it's always best to apply. Um, and the reason for that is, is there could be some of that state aid that Hunter was, was talking about, or it could be that if you qualify for a um, foundation scholarship, you still have to find, fill out your financial aid. 
So it, it's to your benefit to go ahead and complete that application. And we're there to help you. We'll help you along the way because some of those questions can be confusing. Um, so if you get stumped or if you have questions on how you do any of that, or in the verification process, you may have questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're also gonna make sure that you're in the right program of study. And in order to make sure you're in the right program of study, I'm gonna share my screen in a minute when I talk to you about those different programs. But we're gonna identify that from the, from the very beginning. A lot of people choose a program and it's not really the right one. It may be um, a career technical program when they're thinking it's supposed to be transfer. So we're gonna verify that in, the, in that process for you. We're gonna help you learn some of the systems that you need to learn. For instance, there's Canvas um, that you need to learn for online learning. There's also going to be um, how, to, how to look at your email, how to log in the first time to your MyCVCC, um, navigate, and your student information system. These are all tools that are going to help you be successful um, throughout. As a new student, you will have a new student orientation that is that when you first get in your classes um, and enroll, you're going to be activated into that new student orientation. With that, that's going to help you learn all those systems as well. Um, but it's also going to give you all of our great resources that are available at the, at, at the college for you. Tutoring services, um, free tutoring in pretty much any subject. We have the mall, which is a, a place that you can go into for its math achievement learning lab for free tutoring in math. Math can be one of those stumbling blocks for a lot of people. Um, me. Um, for, for one. And um, so in order to be able to get the help that you need, take advantage of that free tutoring. Also, we have a writing center that you can go in and they will help you. You, you write your papers, um, go to see them, and they'll be able to work with you and kind of give you some critique and feedback that can benefit you in your courses. So that is very beneficial to go to any of the tutor student success center. You'll be able to go to for a variety of different topics as well. Um, another, another benefit is going to be able to know um, then to be able to connect with your counselor to be able to figure out what courses that you want to get into. Um, some of you may have questions right now about are, is it going to be on campus this semester? Well, we are going to be 60% on campus and 40% that's going to still be online. So those career technical programs that some of you put in, they are always going to be on campus. They are face to face because they're more practical. They're hands on. You need to be there. Culinary arts, you can't really learn how to bake and cook if you're not there um, practicing that or welding to be able to experience um, that. So most of the career technical ones and some of the ones that are not career technical, your sciences and, and things like that will be on campus. Um, there will be some maybe hybrid parts of it that we were talking about. You may have an online portion of your class, but then you come in for a lab. Um, so the schedule is out, the fall schedule is out that you can go ahead and review and I'll show you where to find that. Um, but you'll be able to see if they're gonna be on campus or they're in person. And um, some of them are called um, virtual. Um, they're gonna be where you have a Zoom link that you go in and there's gonna be a time associated with it, but you'll still be able to do it from home um, where you'll be able to go in and look at that. So I'm gonna share my screen with you now and be able to show you what the different programs look like and how you learn a little bit about that. Can everyone see that? Okay. So when you look at this, at the very top of um, our website is just centralvirginia.edu and Central Virginia is all spelled out. Um, you go to programs and classes. When you're in programs and classes, this is where each of the different programs are listed. You're gonna find within each one credit and non-credit programs. So even the ones that Francie was talking about will be embedded within some of these as well. So for instance, if you're looking for transfer, you're pretty much, some people may not know what they really wanna do in general studies might be the best path for them. When you click on the link, it'll take you to general studies. You click on general studies, and then down at the bottom, there are some of these pathways. So most of us are gonna be the general studies, um, just general. Now I wanna 
I want to branch off just a little bit with this because I think there was a question about early college. Um, and so with the early college, you'll see some of the general studies, early college, and each of the different early college renditions of general studies based on which locality you're at. If you're in Bedford, if you're in Lynchburg City or Campbell County or Appomattox or Amherst, there are different ones for that. Uh, so when you're looking at this, in order to get into the early college, there was an application. The application goes out and then what happens with that is then you will get a letter saying whether or not you were accepted into the early college program. In order to get enrolled into those courses for early college, you cannot enroll them yourself. The actual um, counselor or dual enrollment coordinator will be enrolling those courses for you. So, um, but you will get a letter and it'll say whether or not you were accepted or not into that program. So hope that answers a little bit of that question for you. For general studies, if I click on this, when you click on each of the different programs, you're gonna see a yellow line in most of these where there are stackable credentials or pathways that you're gonna be going through. So when you complete one through 10 of general studies, you'll get a general education certificate. At the very end, your whole program is gonna be general studies and associate in arts and sciences, which means that will allow you to transfer to any four-year college because we are an accredited college where your credits will transfer. These courses right here, when you look at them, uh, these are the courses that are required. So you have your college success, which is pretty much for every program that we offer, your English, your computer class, your math, and then electives you can choose and I can show you where to find your general electives. When we go back, I wanna go into one that's specific for um, like a, a CTE program, one of the, the technical programs. So if I go under industrial maintenance, and industrial manufacturing. This is where you're gonna see some of those programs that Francie was even talking about, the commercial driver's license um, for you, the backflow preven prevention, some of those ones that are workforce related. If you go into machine tool, and if I scroll down and go into this machine tool right here for you, it's gonna then show you, and you'll see there are more stackable credentials. You see the yellow lines. So this one, you're gonna get an OSHA 30 hour card. The, you'll get a machine technology fundamentals and you'll see all the different levels, but your overall goal is gonna mach be machine tool. One of the things I think that's very neat when you look at it from the, very, from the program part of it at the very beginning, look over to your left side. You're gonna see what kind of jobs you could qualify for and what the typical salary range is for that. It's pretty amazing to see some of the salaries that you'll make in some of these, these programs. So spend some time looking at the different programs. I think it'll be helpful for you to go through and look at that. One more thing I wanna tell you about with our programs is the Allied Health programs. So for those of you who may be wanting respiratory therapy, um, med lab or radiology, it is a selective program. Um, so what that means is when you go into to try to apply, there is a separate application process that you have to get into those programs. So for med lab and radiology and respiratory, what you would do is you would reach out to the counseling staff. We would then do a referral for you to the program heads for those, de those departments. Once they get that referral, they send you an application out. They'll set up an appointment for you to go through the process. They will go through, um, they will do an interview process for you. They'll look at your, all your transcripts, high school and college transcripts, if you have any. Um, look through all that information for you to determine if you qualify for their program. Because it is selective, you know, for radiology specifically, there's usually 80 some people that apply for radiology and they typically admit either 12 to 18 students. So it is selective. That doesn't mean that you can't still get in it maybe the next year there's plenty of prereqs that we could get you in and get you to complete while you're waiting on that process. So don't think that you won't get into the program. It just may mean that it may be the following year, but that gives you time to get some of those other courses out of the way. Now for that loaner laptop program, I will tell you that's up at the top under student services. Um, before I go to that though, I wanted to tell you, I'm so sorry. Someone asked about transfer. 
um, transfer information is down at the bottom. And we have transfer agreements with 30 plus um, colleges in our area that will allow you to be able to have a, a articulation agreement in place. Once you click that transfer in information, you're gonna see the guaranteed admissions, you're gonna see the articulation agreements and co-enrollments that we have with different colleges within the area. Um, you can look through any of this information for you. Our transfer electives are listed there as well. So just take some time to look through some of this, um, especially if you're planning on transferring. I will tell you, if you know what college you're transferring to, it helps a little bit to be able to know what electives that you may be needing. And you can then go ahead and look at that information at that other school and kind of partner it up to be able to determine what courses you should be taking with us for that four-year school. Okay, so up at the student services at the top, you're gonna go down and you're gonna look at the library. So when you click on, click on library, at the very bottom, you're gonna see two things. CBCC has a loaner laptops and CBCC has loaner hotspots. Once you click both of them, so if you click on one, then it's gonna come up to your application that you, that you complete to be able to submit, to be able to enter for that. You do have to be in at least six credits in order to be able to qualify for the Lunar Laptop program. So you do need to be enrolled in classes before you complete this application. Now, I just unpacked a whole lot on you, so I'm gonna stop sharing and um, see if anyone, I think there's some chat questions that are in here. Um, any questions that you may have for me at this time? Um, let's see. Does anyone have any questions about the, from what y'all can see in the chat? No, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna hand it over to Deanne McDaniel to talk to you about student life. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Kim. Um, so you've heard my colleagues talk tonight about your academic learning. So when you come to college, you have, of course, your academic learning, but you also have your out-of-class learning. And that's what happens with your participation in student life. And you can gain that through leadership opportunities within our clubs and organizations. Your participation in those clubs and organizations, um, it helps you to build relationships and other skills that you can carry on um, into your life once you graduate from CBCC, whether it's for your professional or personal life. Some of the um, leadership opportunities that we offer are our Student Government Association and then our Student Ambassadors Program, which Kimberly French is the advisor for. Both of those are our biggest leadership opportunities on campus. We also have a student leadership conference that the entire Virginia Community College system brings all of their student leaders to um, once a year. And that's another opportunity to participate in student leadership opportunities. I also, another part of my job outside of being the advisor for the Student Government Association is I also plan a lot of the activities that happen on campus. So we wanna make sure that you're also having fun while you're at college and getting ways to reduce some of your stress and things. Now with us being in this virtual environment, we had to find a way to move all of that activity online and to still engage with you guys. So we created a virtual student center. And in there, we've kind of moved our bulletin boards, newsletters, all of our events, all kinds of information for you online so you can easily access that information. So like next Monday, we have a free concert that we're doing. So that event is being advertised in our virtual student center, the link to the Zoom and everything you can connect through there. We do weekly trivia contests. We do check-ins throughout the semester just to make sure everybody's going, doing okay. Um, and just other random games and things that we'll play throughout the semester. So we've made sure that while we're doing this virtual time that we're staying engaged to you. As Kimberly said, we're going to be moving back on campus um, some in the fall. So we'll still keep that virtual component, component for our students who stay um, online versus coming to classes on campus. So we'll do a mix of both on campus and, off and virtual activities as well. But for right now, most of our activities are gonna stay virtual until we're allowed to have bigger events. So just make sure you're, you're watching your emails and you visit the Virtual Student Center so that you can stay on top of the various events that we have offered for you. They're also on your calendar. 
Um, she, so I know somebody asked about transfer. Well, you'll also in there, we advertise all of the various um, colleges that are doing transfer events with us. So those are posted in there as well so that you can keep up with those and see the different colleges that are coming and you can attend those sessions um, as well. So I hope that everyone um, has a great evening. Thank you for joining us. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Kimberly for Q and A and a final poll. Okay, um, I wanted to follow up on one thing with the dual enrolled. I think someone asked about dual enrolled separate from the early college. So um, for early, for anybody that's a dual enrolled student, they do need to you know, work with their high schools, but also go through Donna Grant Page, who's our dual enrollment coordinator. But there's forms that have to be completed um, by the high school counselor that then gets submitted to um, Donna Grant Page for, us, for her to be able to enter the, the classes. So please make sure to reach out to your local high school counselors um, in order to be able to get, the, to get started with that process. If you have more questions regarding that, please let us know. And we've got Michael Duncan who can maybe answer some more questions on that front as well for you. Um, Kim, there's a question that I missed. Um, somebody had asked about getting their password reset. Mm -hmm. Yes, I put on there, just contact me because it looks like you okay. said you tried calling CBCC and didn't get any help um, and it wouldn't let you to do it yourself. Sometimes it gets to that point where you cannot um, reset it your own self, you have to contact someone. Um, feel free to reach out to me, my number's in, in the chat, um, and I'll be glad to help you. Also, um, as new students, when you log in your first time, um, what Michael Duncan referred to you on, you know, making sure within 24 hours after you apply, you log in using your username and password, because what that's gonna do is it's gonna generate a survey that you have to take, it's a VCCS survey, and instead of having a placement test anymore, that survey determines based on your high school GPA, but also based out if you've been out of high school for more than five years, um, it's gonna determine what level we need to start you with with English and math. So it's really important, you know, you're gonna need to be able to, when you click that link for the survey, it's gonna ask you for your username and password. So if you don't know that, that's gonna, that's gonna prevents you from being able to move forward. So you'll just need to contact us and then we'll be able to help you reset your password for you. Hey, and Kimberly, I do see that someone had a question about the HR certification. We do offer that in the workforce division and we are, our next class is actually going to be um, offered in fall of uh, this year, but we do have registration going on now. And it is first come first serve for anyone who actually registers and meets all of the criteria. Uh, there's lots of funding available for that. Uh, we can certainly send you, I can send you information if you'll provide, shoot me an email or chat with your contact information. I'll send you the flyer and the link. Um, but that will lead to the nationally recognized credential, either the CP or the SCP. Um, so you can kind of choose which one meets your need and we would be happy to help you with that. Thank you, Francie. And I'll tell you what's, what's great about the workforce at the credit side is, you know, you can start with the workforce and you can start with the HR certification that they have. And then you can move into our management HR program that we have. And sometimes when you complete some of those programs, they will do something called a credit buy. They'll give you credit for completion um, in some of those other courses. So, you know, it really goes really well when you can start maybe with the, the workforce side and then transition into the credit side. And again, that gives you more certifications and more credentials under your belt as well. Any questions, any other questions that we haven't, feel free to unmute yourself. We'll be glad to, glad to answer anything for you. Okay, well, while we're, if you do, feel free to. I'm just going to do this final poll for you. Um, I'm going to go to the, the last one. All right, we just want to make sure we did what we were supposed to do for you. Make sure you got the information that you needed. Um, did you find the information helpful? Was it worth your time? And did you learn new opportunities about programs at CVCC? This thing logged off. I was trying to tell you something. Like, 
Oh, sure. Go ahead. Try, try. I was trying to. Um, Don't mess with this one. This photo work right. Probably lost it. You're okay, Natasha. If you want to go ahead and ask the question, go ahead. While she may be coming back, um, I just wanted to let you know, it does look like we hit the majority for answering the questions and being able to give you the information that you needed tonight. If for some reason um, that you, there are some questions that you have, you have all of our information in the chat. Feel free to reach out to us. We'll be glad to answer any questions for you. Um, I thank the panel tonight too for, for your information that you've shared. It was a wealth of information for our students. And next week, for those of you, I think there was somebody interested in EMS. Um, we will have EMS and EMS Advance that will be on tomorrow, um, next week. So please, please know, please come back, um, learn some information about those, those programs. And we thank you so much for being here tonight. Have a good evening.